So illegal substances, or drugs as you know them, are controlled by the Misuse of Drugs Act. This means that they can't be sold, owned or supplied. The main effects of almost all psychoactive drugs, including legal highs, can be categorised into three main categories. Stimulants, downers or psychedelics. Legal highs are substances which produce the same effects as other illegal drugs. The difference is, these substances are not controlled under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Legal highs cannot be sold for human consumption, so they're often sold as bath salts or plant food to get around the law. This has led to people consuming actual plant food and bath salts thinking that they will result in a high, when in actuality all they do is result in either illness or death. And even when the correct substance is purchased, there's no guarantee that it's safe. So you can't really be sure what's in a legal high that you've bought or been given. So along with the desired psychoactive effects, legal highs can also cause reduced inhibitions, drowsiness, excited or agitated states. They can also cause coma, seizures or even death. An infamous example is the case of Mephedrone, which was made illegal in 2010 after causing the death of many people across Europe, especially in the UK. Mephedrone is an example of a synthetic cathinone, which is a chemical with a modified structure to cathinone, which is a compound found in a plant called cat, which gives amphetamine-like effects when chewed. The typical mechanism of these compounds is to act on monoamine transporters to inhibit reuptake of monoamine neurotransmitters. Mephedrone has been shown to achieve this by acting as a non-selective substrate for monoamine transporters. They have also been shown to actually increase the amount of neurotransmitter released. This means that there are more neurotransmitter molecules in the synapse acting on the receptors. At the same time, the reuptake of these is being inhibited so that the response is amplified and prolonged. So legal highs are clearly a grey area. They may not be illegal, but they're certainly not always safe. Products sold as legal highs are labelled as not for human consumption in the same way that glue is labelled not for sniffing. If people are aware that they're not supposed to consume these products but still choose to anyway, should we just leave them to it? Legal highs are only legal because they haven't been deemed illegal yet. This raises the question as to whether the law should just prohibit every new drug that people start taking. Is that really a good way to go about it? Some people argue that if we send products for clinical testing before they're sold, this would make them safer. They could then be produced, labelled, manufactured and dosed properly by proper manufacturers. The commercial manufacturer would also make the products a lot safer, and there would be more awareness of risks and treatments. Intervening would move new synthetic drugs out of a grey area. It also forces producers to be responsible for the safety of their new products. However, others argue that this would be putting other people at the risk of addiction. But this is already a problem with other illegal drugs such as tobacco and alcohol. But then would legal highs become a gateway drug for other more harmful and addictive substances? Or could we even benefit from completely decriminalising drugs? For example, Portugal have decriminalised drugs and have seen a massive drop in marijuana usage. Proportionally, more Americans have used cocaine than Portuguese have used marijuana. The argument made by critics is that the fear of prison drives addicts underground and creates a black market. Incarceration is more expensive than treatment, so why not give addicts health services instead? The four main principles of bioethics are non-malevolence, beneficence, autonomy and justice. Non-malevolence actually means do no harm. Some legal highs, like methadone, are addictive, and the stronger the addiction, the more likely the individual is to turn to crime to fund the addiction. These are damaging to individuals and communities, which could be said to be doing them harm. Beneficence requires the prevention and removal of harm and the promotion of good. By allowing legal highs to be freely sold, it could be said they are allowing harm. The next principle that must be considered is the right of every human to their own autonomy. This is the right of every individual to make decisions of their own body and self-determinancy. A person could be argued to have the right to take legal highs as it is their own body and their decision. Autonomy must also be protected from the community as a whole. Legal highs can be used to spike drinks. This breaks the autonomy of the victim. If we're thinking about autonomy, we also have to consider paternalism. Paternalism is the removal of another person's autonomy for the benefit to them. An example of paternalism within law is the requirement of someone to wear a motorbike helmet. The final principle of biomedical ethics is to treat things with justice. This essentially means treating things equally. We allow alcohol and tobacco in society despite them being amongst the most lethal substances. But we ban cannabis and magic mushrooms even though they've been proven to be potentially harmless. This is unjust because we are not treating alike things equally. If we allowed safer highs to be made available, would people still seek out more dangerous legal highs?